morning. This is Zane with Getting Close Outdoors. These are the self bows that I have at home right now. Uh, and I'm going to do some speed testing. I want to see of the bows that I've killed animals with, what kind of uh, speed do they get. I'm going to shoot the same arrows through all six of these bows. Um, we're going to shoot a, roughly a 500 grain arrow, a 600 grain arrow, and a 700 grain arrow. I'm going to shoot them several times. I'm going to show you the data. I'm going to graph it. We're going to see which bows are efficient and which bows are less efficient. Uh, I hope that this will reveal uh, some variation in my designs which could lead me to a better uh, bow build in the future. And it might uh, inspire me to change some of the things about these bows already. That's one good thing about being a bowyer. You never quit improving. So even though these bows are finished, in my opinion, I could still pick them back up and change something about them tomorrow. And it might improve the speed and the accuracy. The first bow I have to introduce is Guidel Kane. He is an Osage bow backed with raw hide with purple heart tips. I've attached a quickie quiver on the side of this bow. This is a view of the shape of the bow and how tall it is standing next to me. This is Tam. It's a very special bow to me. In October of 2018, I shot this doe with Tam. It was the first big game animal I ever killed with a uh, bow I made myself. Complete pass through. The deer skipped out there and died with inside of me. It was truly amazing. That same morning, I had the opportunity to shoot a hog. Tam is a hickory bow backed with two layers of raw hide. Uh, the tips are recurved and the tips are overlaid with antler. Ten days later that same season, I got another opportunity. I shot a doe, perfect heart shot, passed through. She made it less than 100 yards. This is Sulin. She is a hickory bow with a bend through the handle design rawhide back with two layers and purple heart tips. I finished her in 2019 and killed a deer with her in 2019. Sulin was a project to see how short I can make a hunting bow. This is Nynaeve. She's a hickory bow back with two layers of rawhide, purple heart limb tips and recurved limb tips. I harvested a six point buck with her on October 10th, 2020. I have a video up on this hunt. It's called Finishing the Bow Nynaeve. See the link in the upper right corner. Fun fact, she's the tallest bow I've ever made. This bow I named Avienda. It is a hickory bow of a flat bow design. I made it originally for my wife, however, it is uncomfortable for her due to the heavy draw weight. This is the shortest bow I have. I used rasp completely to shape the belly of this bow. After this bow build, I bought a draw knife. So in the preliminary testing of my bows, basically I got the bows out and I shot um, the different weight arrows several times and then I averaged the speed in feet per second. So each column is dedicated to a bow. This is Avienda, Sulin, Tam, Nynaeve, Guidel Kane. These are the average arrow speeds and these are the arrow weights. All the other calculations such as momentum and kinetic energy hinge off of this average speed. Also I documented some of the characteristics of the bows to see if there's any uh, outliers in, that might make my bow more efficient such as string follow with the unstrung bow the wood type and the bow length. This is the unstrung knock to knock length. So then I graphed uh, the speed of the arrows for each bow in the three data points. So basically you have arrow weight in grains on the bottom x-axis and we have uh, speed in feet per second on the y-axis. All of my bows graphed relatively linear in these three data points. 
there was no big surprises, I think, in Bo performance at this point. I did expect Sulin to perform better as she is a short bow with very light tips and uh, I had actually killed a deer with this this bow and it was the most underperforming bow in the study. I find that very, very interesting. It was the 51 pound bow so it's the lightest um, but I, I honestly expected it to perform higher uh, than Avienda and um, going forward also Guido Kane was a huge disappointment. It's the only uh, Osage bow in this lineup. And it was outperformed by Nynaeve, which is a bow that I had to patch with raw hide because it had worm holes through it. Uh, and I really was not uh, super thrilled about this bow build, but it was the, it's the fastest bow I have. Um, the, both of them grew 57 pounds at 28 inches. So, so to have one outperform the other is definitely, definitely indicative of uh, an efficiency factor of some kind. The next graph I have to show you is the uh, arrow momentum graph. Using the average speeds, you can calculate the arrow's momentum. Again, my data points were very linear uh, on all three arrows. Of course, momentum increases with arrow weight in grains. So as we climb in arrow weight, even though speed is diminishing, uh, momentum is growing. So I have this red horizontal line here. This red horizontal line is the minimum momentum I have used that got the job done. Uh, Sulin uh, is the gray line and I have killed a deer with the uh, 685 grain arrow. So I would say this is the minimum momentum I have used to uh, successfully kill a white-tailed deer and I achieved full pass-through with that. So just looking at that I could have used Nynaeve or Guidel Kane at a roughly uh, you know roughly the 600 grain arrow and still had the same momentum if I had dropped down to a 500 grain arrow, I would be far under the momentum that I had used to get the job done earlier. So I think this is interesting. We're going to look at kinetic energy next. This is the kinetic energy graph. The kinetic energy grows linearly with arrow weight. A lot of people think that speed equals kinetic energy. Um, that is true. However, with arrow weight, even with diminishing speed, my kinetic energy is still growing. Not at quite the rate that momentum was growing. So again, I have the minimum kinetic energy that I have used to successfully kill a white-tailed deer. That's here again with the Sulin arrow, the 685 grain arrow. Of note here, you can see that this line is not nearly as harsh and picky as the momentum minimum momentum energy required to kill a deer. Remember uh, Nynaeve and Guido Kane, the arrow graph uh, dipped below the minimum momentum on the other graph after about the 600 grain arrow. However, using kinetic energy to be our guide for lethality, it appears that a 500 or even, shoot, even maybe a 350 grain arrow, if we continued this pattern, would reach the minimum kinetic energy required to kill my deer if I used a 350 grain arrow on Guido Kane or Nynaeve. Uh, even Tam at a 500 grain arrow exceeds the kinetic energy reached with Sulin at the 685 grain arrow. Now, I'm not saying that those lightweight arrows couldn't get the job done. Basically, momentum is the pickier of the two uh, energy calculations that w that generally people observe for estimating lethality of arrows. So after the initial testing of my bow speeds, I wanted to find some way to calculate an equal estimation of my bow efficiency. It occurred to me if you have different poundage bows, you cannot judge them by how fast they project the same arrow. A lot of self bowyers uh, generally use the rule of thumb of how fast can their bow propel a 10 grains per pound of draw weight arrow. So using my graphs, which have best of fit lines through the three data points I have, I could estimate 10 grains per pound draw weight arrow uh, speeds. So in this way, I feel like I could reasonably estimate the efficiency of my bows in an equal manner across the board. So it starts with Sulin down here at the bottom. With that you have a 510 grain arrow, that would be 10 grains per pound of draw weight arrow. It would propel that arrow at 140.5 feet per second and so on. Uh, 
So, so basically, Sulin was the most underperforming bow, which is quite disappointing to me. Also, Tam wasn't as uh, high performing as, as I'd hoped. And a uh, big disappointment was Guido Kane, as I spoke about earlier. Basically, he's an Osage bow. I had high hopes for him, and he's my newest bow. I was really proud of him, but uh, he, he underperformed. So, so I was set about trying to figure out what factors in these bows I could improve to get them up to par, uh, at least performing on the level as some of the other bows I've made. So basically what I did is I lightened the tips up, small as I thought I could get away with. I mean, this is, this is really small. Like, the width is smaller than my finger. Really small, okay? Took the, took the tips down. I, I recurved the bottom, and the, the top was naturally recurved, but I recurved it just a hair more. So I recurved the bottom, recurved the top. Also, I worked on the tiller quite a bit. Um, basically, I think it was bending in some spots and not bending in others. So basically, I had to work on the upper part of this limb and the whole part of this limb. Did go down in... Uh, in uh, weight to about a 50 pound bow now, but there's your 27, 50 pounds, 27 inches. Okay, here we go. Just look at the tiller here. It's beautiful. And the release. So what I did with Tam, um, I noticed that the tiller was significantly out. This lower limb seemed to be much weaker than the upper limb. So basically I heat treated the lower limb. What happens when you heat treat wood, it becomes stiffer. So now I feel like the tiller is much better, much more even uh, with the heated, heat treated lower limb. It's much more even. This bends about like this one does before this one was bending significantly more than the top limb. Also, I, I took some uh, material off the. I took some material off the top and bottom limb tips. Call him a 50-pound bow. Back in 2015. Now he's stiffened up with age. That's a 56-pound draw. So this is Guido Kane. Uh, this is after the rework. Basically what I did is I took the tips down as small as I feel like I could get away with. You can see the, the tips are about as small as my finger now. And I recurved the tips more, okay? With Guido Kane's performance on the speed testing. Fifty-six at twenty-eight. This is now my fastest bow. There you go. Thank you for bearing with me through all the discussion, the graph, the speed testing. Uh, now we're at the rubber meets the road point. Uh, if you stuck with me through all this shenanigans, you're uh, apparently interested in bow design, probably making your own bows and that kind of thing. I'm definitely not the best bowyer, okay? This is just how I've found to improve my bows and my designs. Looking at this graph, this is the arrow speed at 10 grains per pound of bow weight graph again. The blue is the original initial speed testing for each of these bows. The orange is the next time I, I test them. Uh, Avienda, both before and after, shoot almost exactly the same. That's because I changed nothing about Avienda. The same can be said about Nynaeve. I did not alter their bow designs. I was happy with their speeds, okay? Sulin, Tam, and Guido Kane got a facelift. A rework okay basically lightening the tips on a bow is going to make it more efficient more energy is transferred into the arrow rather than moving the heavy wood limb tips 
I heard an old timer one time say, uh, you know, how light can you, basically, how light can you take your limb tips? It's hard to know that answer. But what he, what this old timer, he was a bow builder, said, he said, well, you keep going down lighter and lighter and lighter, and when the limb tips break off, well, then you just have to back up a little bit. Of course, that was a joke, because once you've gone too light and you break your limb tips off, that bow's gone. I've done that before. Um, but going down lighter is going to increase the energy and efficiency of your bow. So taking the limb tips lighter, also recurving limb tips is going to store more energy in your limbs. If you think about that, it's going to make your string follow less. Therefore, that's going to preserve energy. Okay. Uh, so, so lighten the limb tips, recurve the tips if your bow wood can handle the stress. And then also one thing I found is some of these old bows I've had on my wall for seven, eight years, uh, the tiller was not that good. So examining and making sure all the wood is working in unison, evenly, lightening the limb tips, and recurving the limb tips, all will improve bow speed, okay? Uh, some characteristics that I think are important are length of the bow. Uh, longer bows, I think, are going to be more efficient. That's what I saw in my dad, okay? Um, but you want a short bow if you're a tree stand hunter and that kind of thing. So, so it's kind of a give and take. Uh, I, I believe the wood does not have to move as far with a very long bow. Um, you know, if you can draw a short bow to 27 inches and you draw a long bow to 27 inches, a long in length, they, these are all long bows, you draw it, well, the, the string moving 27 inches for that short bow has to move the limb tips of a short bow much further. Therefore, some of that energy is lost moving the wood of the limb tips. If you have a very, very long bow, well, you pull that string 27 inches back, well, maybe the limb tips on the longbow don't have to move as far. So that's my theory on why long bows, long in length, not long bow designs, probably transfer energy a little bit more efficiently. But there's a trade-off in convenience. So thank you for watching. Uh, please comment down below. Tell me what you think about this. Tell me what tricks you've found to make your bows faster um and if anybody likes my bows we could talk if you wanted to buy one because i have too many on the wall thanks